Hi and welcome. I am going to be presenting today on the Culinary Innovation and Food Technology Program at Niagara College. And right now we're in our fall recruiting period for students to join the program. And I do get a lot of questions asked about what on earth is culinary innovation and why should I join this program? Well, let's take some time and, and, and walk through those questions. So my name is Dr. Amy Prue and I'm the program coordinator for the program. And have been with the program since its inception about 10 years ago. It's a unique program at Niagara College and actually a very unique program across the country. It blends food science and culinary together to develop the next generation of skilled workers for the food manufacturing sector. So let's just start with a quiz here. If you really think about it, in a normal week, I realize we're in COVID right now, but in a normal week, how many meals would a typical consumer be eating at a restaurant versus at a grocery store? And the question, uh, often when I'm doing this in a group, people underestimate just how much of our food is actually coming from the manufacturing sector. Even within restaurants, many of the food products that we are eating actually were fabricated through industrial manufacturing and are then rewarmed and uh, plated and served, but they are products of food manufacturing. And in North America, 17 out of 21 meals are prepared at home with food from retail stores. And so when I say retail stores, I mean grocery stores. And that's quite interesting to think about just how much of our experience with food is related to the grocery store. In the average Canadian household spends about um, $8,500 on food. The, the most recent numbers from Statistics Canada came out in 2017 and 70% of that spend was spent on traditional groceries and 30% was spent on restaurant meals and food service. And so often say, follow the money, who is making your food? It is actually food scientists who are involved in the industry who understand culinary principles, but they are then able to manufacture those food products in large scale and present it in a way that the grocery stores can have extended shelf life and highly safe product and product that in some cases can sit on the shelves for weeks or months and in some cases even years and do that very very safely and with high quality. So just some frontline food facts here from our friends at Food and Beverage Ontario uh, approximately 120,000 uh, people in Ontario are employed in food and beverage manufacturing. And there are almost 4,000, 3,800 businesses that are in Ontario alone that are manufacturing food and beverage products. That's a huge employment opportunity. More than 90% of Ontario businesses in food, and manu food manufacturing employ fewer than 100 people. And so it's a business where there's a lot of startup culture, a lot of entrepreneurship, and a lot of opportunity, both within the major city centers, but also in rural areas. The three top sectors are bakery, meat, and beverage processing. And Niagara is uniquely positioned because we are in the heart of much of the beverage processing uh, sector, and we have some aligned programs as well. But uh, we are within a very, very short commute to some of the largest manufacturing facilities in the country. Um, some of them are located in um, Hamilton or um, Burlington, Brampton, Mississauga. That is well within a very short commuting distance of our campus location. Within Ontario, um, manufacturers are purchasing approximately 65% of all of the farm products that are produced. and then repurposing them into something else. So when we talk about food manufacturing, if you think about uh, some of the most unprocessed products that we might be consuming, flour, it's milled. There are food scientists involved. Um, processed salad or uh, baby carrots, those are, um, there's lots and lots of food science involved in that in terms of safe food production. Milk, those pasteurization facilities, uh, meat processing, there's extensive amount of food safety involved in slaughter and uh, butchery operations. And so it's a really important segment of our, of our uh, manufacturing sector in Ontario, and it is $42 billion in revenue annually. This is a huge employment opportunity. And what's most curious is that 
across Canada, it's about it's about two hundred and fifty thousand. So approximately half of those jobs are in Ontario. A lot of good salaried management roles are in place for that. And we we use a rough estimate of about uh, 10 percent of that. So if there's two hundred fifty thousand jobs in Canada, that's about twenty five thousand management type roles. And currently the employment chronic vacancy. So the, the, the job sitting open is sitting at about 29,000. Now, admittedly, many of those are general labor positions. But again, if we use that, um, that 10% uh, metric for uh, management and technical careers, that's still close to 3000 jobs that are currently sitting vacant, waiting for someone perhaps like yourself, who would be interesting in, uh, in filling that role in a management type position. Last but not least, the um, economic strategy tables projected this admittedly was pre COVID, but projections out to 2025 were that um, to meet the economic strategy tables for Canada, we would need 65,000 new workers joining the food manufacturing sector. And so again, if we use that 10% metric, that's um, more than 6,000 workers that we need who are going to be in uh, technical and management type roles, making sure that the food that we are manufacturing and producing in Canada is safe and high quality and delicious. So food science is, it's a really unique field. We are combining a wide variety of science. This is a pre-COVID photo. And so um, many people have been asking me, so how are you coping with the COVID protocols? And I'm like, uh, we already were acting like there were COVID protocols before there was COVID. Um, microbiology is part of our discipline, chemistry is part of our discipline, understanding food laws and regulations so that we can make food safely, label it properly and package it and um, export it appropriately. This is all part of our discipline, as well as understanding the engineering and fabrication methods that are necessary. Extending the shelf life is part of our work. Um, but last but not least, the most important thing that sells food products and has that repeat sale is the taste of that food product. And so that's why we've combined our discipline with culinary, because honestly, if you don't make a product that's delicious, people aren't going to buy it again. And we've got to combine all these disciplines together in a really careful and uh, strategic balance. So what do we do? We develop new food products mostly for consumer packaged goods. When I say that, th those are the products that you're buying in the grocery store, but it, many times you're doing product development on behalf of restaurants as well. And we could be producing product more likely for the larger branded restaurants, um, quick service restaurants, fast food, and so on. Often our graduates are going into food safety management. Niagara College has a really uh, excellent reputation for high quality food safety education, and all of our students are trained in HACCP as well as um, the SQF program, which is part of the Global Food Safety Initiative. Our students are also well trained in the Safe Food for Canadians Act and Regulation and have strong regulatory backgrounds. Many of our graduates um, go into manufacturing supervision and operations management, and so they are often overseeing uh, manufacturing at the floor level. Uh, leading teams, providing training, making sure that those teams are functioning at a high level. Some of our grads go into packaging technology and understand labeling or the functional needs of packages so that we get extended shelf life and high quality on that product when it sits on the shelf. Uh, many of our grads go into research and development, and I'll talk about this further, but our graduates often get additional training through our uh, research and innovation division at the college. We started a research center for food and beverage innovation back in 2012 and many of our top students are able to gain employment and we try and uh, bring many of those research projects into the classroom as a means of um, work integrated learning so that all of the students have the chance to see what it's like to be part of a research and development team. Some of our grads go into technical sales and they help companies identify ways to sell ingredients. Um, many of the many of the food science jobs that are in the province and actually around the world 
are actually for ingredient companies. These are companies that oftentimes don't get the name brand recognition that we see at the grocery store, but the ingredients that go into food products at the wholesale level are really, really extraordinarily important. And technical salespeople understand how those ingredients function and help the product developers um, get the best out of those ingredients. Last but not least, many of our students go into food inspection and auditing. And um, something worth noting, and I do get this question quite a bit, this is not a public health inspection program. This is a program that trains students extensively in food safety management. And so our, our students who become food inspectors typically are joining the Canadian Food Inspection Agency as um, specialist program inspectors within meat processing or um, within egg inspection. We have had graduates from this program join the CFIA as inspectors. Others go on to food safety auditing and have joined organizations such as SGS Canada as audit trainees to learn how to do the food safety audits that are done by what are called third party um, audit and inspection teams. So it's something that's really important from our, our, our program is just how hands on we are. We are very, very practical and very oriented towards industry specific skill sets. We are priding our program on our competency-based education and training model. So what we do is we try and integrate as much as possible real world problems, real industry problems, and make sure that our skills are going to be absolutely relevant to the workplace. So just to walk through all of these students, um, Al here is currently a supervisor um, for operations at Chocolate Effects in Niagara-on-the-Lake. Jamie Opitz has been um, working for research and innovation. Michael here is a technical services rep at Puratos, which is a food ingredients company that specializes in baking. And he is a bakery technologist, um, one of the best bread makers that we've ever had come through the program. We've got Emily here, and she is the food safety coordinator for Sprucewood Bakery that makes shortbread cookies. Um, Audra here is working as a food safety and quality assurance specialist for Maple Leaf. Nathan is um, product development specialist at Dare Foods and specializing in their cracker program. And Rachel here is a product development coordinator at Collective Arts, which is a brewing facility. And again, all of our students are very, very focused on work ready skills. And last but not least, this wonderful woman in the front is uh, Sarbjit Bamra and she is our professor of food safety. And she is uh, absolutely brilliant in terms of her teaching approach. I want to just impress upon people how we are so focused on getting out into the workforce. It's been hard over the past year with COVID, but normally our students are out doing co-op terms. We are going on field trips. We are bringing in speakers into the classroom and we are very, very focused on building as much the technical skills as well as the community and the networking that's absolutely critical for succeeding in this field. So uh, some technical specifications about our program. It is a three year advanced diploma, six semesters plus a one co-op term. And it is that strategic mix of culinary, science and technology, business, regulatory and management. And that does open so many diverse options. In that previous slide, I. Uh, showed uh, a small group of students out on a field trip and each one of them has a different role to play from food safety to management to operations to sales to um, you name it they are in all sorts of different roles I often joke that the the innovation students are uh, food ninjas because we've had students go off and start their own businesses we've had students go back to be chefs or um, working within restaurants, but they take on a different dimension, oftentimes uh, stepping in as coordinators for health and safety or coordinators for um, food safety and auditing. We are one of the most active programs at the college for what's called course integrated research partnerships. And the research and innovation division is a really important part of our community they employ many of our top students. And so oftentimes students come to us and they say, well, 
how do I know that the college program is right for me because maybe I've got a degree in a field from a previous education experience. We are able to zone in on the customization within our program so that each student can find a space where they can excel and challenge themselves. So when we talk about this work integrated learning and the importance of industry, we think about this triangular relationship that we are constantly engaging with our industry partners. We have some really great relationships with some of the biggest um, industry sector organizations such as the Canadian Institute of Food Science and Technology and Food Processing Skills Canada as well as Food and Beverage Ontario. We are engaging with industry constantly in dialogue so that our faculty are trying to stay up to date as much as possible and um, make sure that we're teaching the skills that are relevant to today's industry as well as tomorrow's industry. And we are making sure that the students have really rich engagement directly with industry in that process. And one way we do this is we often bring in case studies and course-based research partnerships. And all of these companies that are listed up here are companies that we have had relationship with in the classroom. And these companies have come in with a case study that we've been able to position right within the class and all of the students are able to work on these projects with facilitation from their professors of course and then engage directly back with the industry partners gaining that real world experience of what it's like to be working as part of the R&D or quality management team. I mentioned before just how important it is for us to think about creating skilled workers because the, the need in Ontario and the need in Canada is quite urgent. We try and keep our class sizes very small and in the culinary innovation program, historically we have never had classes more than 24 students and that allows us lots of time for one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I bring up this slide, it's, it's called Bloom's Two Sigma Paradox and the idea being that conventional classroom where everyone's just listening to someone lecture is good at preparing people for the workforce, but mastery learning through really focusing on competency and uh, using lots of case studies and real world problems is even more effective at uh, developing that skill level. Last but not least, having lots and lots of one-on-one -on -one mentorship increases the skill level even further. And so we are blending lots of mentorship with mastery learning to make sure that our students are absolutely as successful as possible when they're graduating from our programs. So again, lots of hands-on experience. We are a very diverse team. Um, our faculty is very international with, uh, I think every one of us is from a different country. We bring in many international students from around the world. This is a photo from our chemistry lab. These are actual students who are in the program right now. and. Again, we're very focused on hands-on learning. Right now with COVID, we are still teaching our labs. And while we're compressing some of our theory into online delivery, we are maintaining our in-lab presence and taking lots and lots of time. I realize this is a chemistry lab. In the previous photo, we had uh, all the masks. That's what it looks like now in most of our labs. But microbiology labs, historically, the students were often wearing um, medical masks, wearing hairnets, wearing gloves within the classroom, signing in and using extended uh, sanitation protocols. Um, this is the norm for the food manufacturing sector, that these sorts of protocols are absolutely typical for any sort of ready to eat manufacturing. Wearing masks is just part of our normal existence and more so given the essential nature of our workforce. So again, we are in normal times just out there constantly engaging with the industry. We have built a really rich relationship with so many great industry partners across uh, Southern Ontario. And we uh, make as much effort as possible to get out and interact with them and um, get to learn about what the industry trends are and look at the career opportunities that are available to the to our students. So here, here the students are um, visiting the headquarters of Maple Leaf Foods in Mississauga, Ontario with uh, Darlene McDonald over there in the corner. Again, culinary skills is the root of where we are coming from and I can't stress this enough that um, 
culinary is where many of our students are coming from and so we do create bridging opportunities many of our students start in chef skills or cullen area management and we build the bridging opportunity for those students who see the opportunity or want to bridge in to be able to transfer over into cullen area innovation as seamlessly as possible yes there is a chemistry and nutrition and a has of course that need to be picked up but um, with COVID, we have been able to prove the uh, capabilities of doing this through online delivery. And that's going to, I th believe, open up a lot of opportunity for laddering for students to join the sector. Uh, I don't want to say this uh, in, a, in a negative way, but the restaurant sector has been very challenged during the period of COVID. And the food manufacturing sector, meanwhile, has exploded in terms of its... Uh, requirement for delivering food products. Many of the food manufacturing companies were actively hiring all through COVID and extremely eager, if not, um, if not in some cases, almost desperate to get skilled workers because of the urgent need. And again, many of those positions are going to be technical and managerial and with a, with a much more uh, balanced work life um, than the restaurant sector and oftentimes a salary job at a higher starting point than the restaurant sector. I, I don't want to sound like that's a negative towards um, culinary jobs, but it's a clearly differentiated opportunity, which I think is worth seriously considering. Many of our graduates um, actually came to the culinary innovation program after having worked in the restaurant sector for a few years and realizing that they wanted more education and they wanted the chance to uh, convert over into more of a, a a management or desk type job but never lose that love for food and that passion for creating deliciousness that they uh, instilled upon themselves in their original culinary training Oh, did I, I skip my slide here? Again, uh, hair nets and masks are all part of this. But uh, honestly, we just we we pride ourselves in getting out there and being very very practical in our learning. Again, I often joke with the students that we are cooking with our computers. As much as we are out there um, thinking creatively, we are doing lots of data analysis, and and, and as such, it attracts. Uh, two types of students, both those students who are science oriented but love food, as well as the uh, the creative students who really enjoy and have the passion for creative product development but see more out of their career and are willing to put up with the extra challenge of a three-year program and persevere to just open up so many more opportunities. Here we are out at a trade show and um, this is CL, the Salon International des Aliments. And again, the food manufacturing sector is such a dynamic space, uh, both in Ontario as well as around the world. And honestly, the program has taken our students to all sorts of different opportunities. Some of our students have had uh, co-op uh, terms in China, in Ireland. We have uh, students who have returned uh, working in Vietnam. We have... Um, opportunities that have taken our students quite literally all over the world and we continue to keep growing our program we are one of the newer programs and we are constantly looking at opportunities to grow so again we are so hands-on and so practically focused i think it's a great program obviously i had the chance to build it out and using uh, using a management premise of um design with intent behind it. We invented this program and created it with the ideal product development and food safety strategies in mind. And as such, we are a big, big uh, component of our, the work that we do is on quality management and continuous improvement. And so we are constantly pivoting and finding new ways to deliver our program such that we are absolutely on trend and focused on future forward skills. So I'll leave you with uh, a few last photos here. This is one of my favorite experiences. We were training the students here on how to do focus groups and we did a big uh, work integrated learning experience with Rich Foods, which is a 
American based company but uh, local to us based out of Buffalo and they wanted to understand what is the millennial marketplace for um, their legacy brands and so the students took all of those legacy brands and they repositioned them and they did up all sorts of different concepts and they ran their own focus groups and then based off of those focus groups ideas they did a prioritization exercise and then those top ideas were fabricated into a um, a lookbook and style guide that has been adopted by food service providers across North America to understand how those uh, legacy brand f rich products um, from rich food uh, from rich food products could be positioned in uh, food service and it was such a rich experience and you can just see how much camaraderie there is from that whole um, experience of working on that project. So again, where are our grants working? Um, lots of food R&D and product development companies. In other cases, they're in food safety. Grocery Corporate is another outlet where uh, graduates are going into product development or food safety or auditing within uh, companies like Sobeys and Loblaws. We've had folks go into quality assurance and quality control with a wide variety of different companies. Some of them have joined small entrepreneurial companies and we actually have had students start their own companies too. Interestingly, some of them go into pet food, and pet food is, uh, under the NAICS system here in North America, considered a food manufacturing segment, and the skills that they learn in human food are absolutely relevant to pet food. Um, a lot of migrate uh, into the cannabis sector, and uh, cannabis edibles is a huge um, growing industry, and their food science skills are absolutely relevant to product development, but also the quality assurance and regulatory skills that are learned in our program are absolutely in demand in the cannabis sector. Last but not least in beverage manufacturing, uh, uh, food safety, quality assurance, quality management. These are all used by a wide variety of um, winery, uh, brewery and um, other alternative beverage manufacturers. What's really cool too is again, Niagara College is very integrated when it comes to our programs and so many of our graduates leave the program um, successfully completing it and then looking for more and so we've had students graduate out of culinary innovation and go into the cannabis postgrad certificate we've also had grads leave the program um, graduate and enter into our wine beer or distillation programs some of them are looking at other um, dimensions of the manufacturing sector and so robotics and advanced automation are really critical to food manufacturing as is supply chain and operations management these are all diploma programs um, that niagara college offers business and marketing is obviously a huge huge demand um, within the food manufacturing sector and it's extremely complementary to the food science skills last but not least um, we have had graduates of the Culinary Innovation Program go on and go into skilled trade apprenticeship programs. Um, they have uh, returned to school in some of our trades programs such as welding or in electrician and then done their apprenticeship and the food manufacturing sector is absolutely, um, absolutely uh, in critical shortage for skilled trades workers who have specialty in food safety and food industry uh, food industry applications and so it's extremely complementary for those two skill sets to be together again clear opportunities and pathways at niagara college to do just that so last but not least we'll leave you with some more um, smiling students here we've got donna who is at uh, give and go a bakery in uh, toronto that does the two bite brownies um erin is a production uh, supervisor at nuts for cheese and it's a vegan cheese company. John there is uh, the national sales manager for Holy Veggie and um, that's Victoria and she is a product development specialist with Molecule which is a cannabis company and Tommy Nguyen is a sales manager at Vineland Estates Winery. So much opportunity and so much diversity but so much uh, camaraderie and uh, networking that comes from the commitment that these students put into their studies. I hope that we have the chance to beat. I hope that we have the chance to um, ask more questions and find out more about what opportunities lie in food manufacturing and find out if the culinary innovation and food technology program at Niagara College is the right program for you. Anyways, I will leave you with that and take care. We'll talk to you soon.